Hi everyone, Mary here. So today I'm going to be working on iron-ons and many of you have requested that I do a video on how I iron you know, images onto fabric and I was going to do some today anyway uh, for myself for some new maybe pillow covers for spring and then also for my Etsy shop. So I thought if I'm at it anyway, I'll just go ahead and make a video and share it with you guys. So this is the transfer paper that I'll be using. I got it off of Amazon and I will link that below in case any of you are interested in purchasing it. It was $14.99 for this pack of 20 sheets which is a pretty good price for iron-on paper. And there are of course other brands you can get that are probably you know maybe better quality but I'm going to give this brand a shot. And the back uh, looks like this, so of course you know this is the back side. And of course you want your image to print on this front side here. And I went ahead and printed out an image that I'm going to use for the first pillow. And you always need to remember to, you know, uh, reverse the image before printing it on, especially if there's any words or anything involved. And I should mention this uh, transfer paper is for light colored fabrics. You can also get transfer paper for dark fabrics. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. So a few things it mentions here in the instructions for this transfer paper is uh, you need of course an inkjet printer and your iron should be 1400 watts or higher. The one I'm using here is 1600 watts so we're good. And I have a piece of Corian here that uh, is you know heat resistant so I'm going to use that for my ironing surface. And just to soften it up a little bit I'm going to put this old press cloth on top here. And I'm going to go ahead and iron my, this is the fabric that I'll be, you know, putting the image on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and iron out all the wrinkles. So I'm going to find my center here and I'm going to make, you know, iron it uh, just a little bit to make sure it's nice and warm. And in the instructions it said to not use steam to apply the image. Now in the past I know I have, but I will try it without steam. And I have the iron at the highest setting. Now I could measure here to get my center, but I'm just going to guess uh, since this is just for myself here. So here I am just constantly moving my iron. Um, it's said to kind of use, you know, small circular motions uh, with your iron and just apply a good amount of pressure. And it's said to do that for three minutes, so we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and peel it off. Uh, in the instructions it said if you peel it off while it's hot, you will get more of a matte finish. And if you wait until it's cold, it'll be more glossy. So I think I'm going to go with a matte finish. So the final step here is setting the image. And they had a few pieces of this, it looks like parchment paper included with the package that I got. So I'll just use this, but I'm pretty sure you could also use parchment paper. Uh, to, to just quickly, you know, iron over the image, making sure that it's, um, you know, washable and the image will stay put. Okay, so the next thing I'll be doing here is using Silhouette Studio to print and cut out an image to iron on to a table runner. Um, I do this if I have an image that has lots of little corners and things to cut around and take a lot of time, you know, using a scissors. I will make my cameo do it and 
I will go ahead and do the screen recording here for those of you that have a cameo and are interested in seeing how I do it. You know, continue watching, but I know many of you probably don't have a cameo, so just fast forward this part. Uh, but for me, it's really, uh, really handy to, you know, use that machine to do my cutting. Okay, so here I am in Silhouette Studio. I have a new tab open, and if you're familiar with this program, you can see that we have the cameo mat with the 12, 12 by 12 inch paper here. And the first thing I want to do is change the paper size. Since I will be um, printing, I need to change the size to 8.5 by 11. And by doing that, I'll go up to this uh, right hand corner icon, and this is where I'll change the paper size. And I always like to show the print border. If I hit that, check that box, as you can see, a light gray um, line appeared here all around. And that way I know where my printable area is. And the next thing we need to do is add registration marks. Anytime you print off something using Silhouette Studio, you need to add registration marks. That way the Cameo will know where to cut. And that can be done here. And of course now it's turned off, so I hit the drop down menu and I always use type one registration marks. And as you can see, they appeared here. Um, the next thing I always do is I go into advanced options and where it says inset, I drag that little bar all the way to the left. That way my registration marks are out as far as possible to the edge. Now, if any of you have any tips here, I have never really figured out if I can actually move these registration marks out even further because I feel there's a lot of wasted space here especially if I'm using kind of expensive you know transfer paper um, but I kind of found a way to work around it and I'll show you that in a second here but uh, if any of you have any advice on that I would be happy to listen and the next thing we want to do is add the image go up here to file hit merge and then find my image all the way down here it's the vintage hair image and I will enlarge it as much as I can and again I'm not going to heed the red lines that's the cutting line I'm going to go by the gray line that way I know um, my printer will print it got it almost too big here So what will happen here is anything that is outside of this red cutting line, I will just need to manually cut out with a scissors. The Cameo will not be cutting out anything outside of the red line, but my printer will be printing everything inside the gray line, so we're good there. So the next thing I'll be doing here is adding another bunny here. I'm just going to copy and paste it. I always like to fill up my paper the best I can because it's kind of expensive and I'm gonna be needing um, three of these, so we're good here. Um, and I'm also gonna flip the image here since, um, as you can see, if I put this bunny underneath the top one like that, his paws are gonna come into my registration marks and you don't wanna do anything to mess those up. So I will be flipping him around. I'll hit this little um, transform panel and the little circle arrow rotate. And I'll do a 180 here. And the next thing you see here is my white part of the picture here is overlapping my top bunny and I can't really see where I'm going with him. So what I'm gonna do is erase some of the white here so I can so I know I'm good for sure on um, you know not overlapping these bunnies here. So I'll hit my eraser and I'm just gonna cut out some of this white here. Select and delete that top one, click on him and drag him back up here. And again, as long as I stay within that printing line here, and I see I need to erase just a little bit more here. Put the arrow here on the left hand to select backspace, select him, the bunny here, drag him back up. And I think that looks pretty good uh, to print out. But what we need to do before we print them out is 
um, trace, make so there's a cutting line all around the image here. So what I'll do is hit the trace icon here and then select trace area. I'm gonna do both of these images at once here. And don't panic, your image will turn yellow. But we just want the outline, so I'm gonna hit this little outline button and I'm also going to turn the threshold bar, I'm going to turn that, take that all the way up to 100%. And as you can see, there's a yellow line, perfectly outlined the image. And if you hit trace, that yellow line will turn red. That means cut. So it looks like um, the images can be perfectly cut out. So the next step here is to print them. And then we'll take them on over to the Cameo to cut them out. I just hit my printer icon up here, make sure I have the correct printer here, and then I hit print. Okay, so this is all you know common sense here, but you want to make sure you have your images um, lying on the Cameo's mat here exactly as they appeared on your screen when you were in you know Silhouette Studio, getting ready to you know cut this out, and you want to make sure your uh, paper lines up perfectly with the edges of you know the lines here on your mat. That way, the Cameo will know you know to pick up these registration marks and then exactly where to cut. Okay, so let's unload this and see what happened here. So as you can see, this cut out uh, perfectly well, all except for the areas that were um, on the other side of that cutting line. So when I'm doing these iron-ons, I always lift up um, any of these little edges here uh, just to make sure that it's sticking before I just go to peel the whole thing off. Um, I just kind of test it. Uh, any you know little corners or edges, those are always kind of harder to get really hot. So I know if those are okay, usually the whole thing is okay to pull off. So let's see what happens. So this video got a little longer than I had anticipated. I apologize for that. I hope you guys found it to be helpful. If you have any tips or advice you want to share on iron-ons, feel free to leave that in the comments below. It's always really interesting to myself and I'm sure to others to read through that and just discover new ways to make something even easier. For me with iron-ons, I think, you know, of course having that iron as hot as possible. And also you can't put too much weight on the image when transferring it. I have often even used a little step stool or something to stand on so I can um, just put some more weight on it. It helps to transfer it quicker and better. I do have these table runners available on my Etsy shop. I will link that below. Um, they are a beautiful white fabric. They measure around 72, 73 inches long and they will have three vintage hair images ironed onto them. I also have a pillow cover that is available on my shop. I had one on our porch swing this summer and I had a lot of questions about it and people wanted to know if I um, would sell it on my Etsy shop. So finally, I got around to it. Um, it is available, so hop on over to my shop if you wanna check it out. And I thank you guys so much for watching my videos. I hope you all have a great week, and I will see you next time. Bye.